segmentation. Uh, but in this area in particular, it, it's broken up into um, really three pieces. And so we're looking to potentially clean that up. The other, the other road in question here is Maddie McCoy, which extends to the west in this area. And it comes across and, we're in, and it ends presently at Connors Road. And so what we're proposing to clean up the addresses, to improve the safety and access to that area, is to rename what used to be the section of a post road that is now disconnected from post road to rename that old post road. And then the section of Maddie McCoy, where it ended at Connors Drive, to actually continue that through all the way across to the other side to where it hits Old Post Road. Well, then what we're suggesting be called Old Post Road. And then the section of Mason Creek that is now really the extension and it functions and feels like Post Road to rename that Post Road. So that is the area that we are uh, bringing to your attention uh, with the opportunity to clean up the addresses to improve access, uh, particularly uh, emergency uh, vehicle access so that if they are headed for Connors Road in the future, uh, they are not uh, having to contend with, is it one of these three segments here uh, they would access from this point the other way? The same thing with Post Road, an address on Post Road, they would not be looking for it over here where it used to be. They would be looking for it where Mason Creek is now. And the same with Maddie McCoy. You, instead of terminating where Connors Road um, is now, it will continue straight across. So essentially it clarifies uh, the streets. They're more continuous. Um, and easier to identify and uh, certainly should help uh, with finding those locations by delivery vehicles and especially emergency response vehicles. So that gives you a backdrop of the area that we are um, suggesting we consider for changing or the board consider for changing. We have uh, over the last at least two weeks, three weeks perhaps, had signage, um, I believe a total of six signs out there on all these road segments, notifying the public of the impending uh, uh, change and the public hearing. And then in addition, we had um, hand-delivered notices to all the affected property owners and others down the road on Maddie McCoy in particular in addition to having um, uh, notices mailed to all the property owners that would be affected and uh, posting it, advertising the public hearing in the legal organ. Uh, so with that, I'll turn, turn it over to uh, the board for any questions and um, if you want to proceed with the public hearing. Okay. What I'm going to do, uh, Director Valentin, I'm going to open up the public hearing first and then I'll come back for the Board of Commissioners with questions, certainly if that's okay with the board. All right, well, this uh, public hearing, I mean, this uh, public hearing is now open and uh, Jennifer Moore, who is our deputy clerk, would you please read the instructions for the speaking, uh, the instructions for the uh, citizens uh, before they come to speak and then I'll ask who's for and who's against. Okay, yes, ma'am. Um, when you're called on to speak, please state your name and address for the record. Please keep your comment um, to three minutes or less. Um, you will be timed and I will notify you when your time is up and we'll ask you to wrap up your comments. Once you're finished speaking, we ask that you mute your phone or if you're on Teams, mute your video and your mic. And with that, Chairman, um, we have two people signed up for this public hearing. However, I do not know if they are for or against. They didn't indicate. Okay. Um, certainly, I'll call their name and 
if you call their name for me, then when they yes. appear, I'll ask if they're for or against. Okay. Since um, the first person signed up is Courtney Zachary. Courtney, are you on the line? Okay. Hello. Is this Courtney Zachary? Okay. Um, we can skip her and go to the next one and then come back maybe at the end. Okay. Um, the next one we have signed up is Teresa Dobbs. Teresa, are you on the line? Wow. Miss Teresa Dobbs. Okay. Well, um, neither one of our citizens who signed up uh, appears to be on the line. Um, and they certainly signed up uh, certainly before the deadline. Um, with that being said, let's try their names once again, uh, clerk, and then uh, we're going to just, it's the, the public hearing is open, and certainly if no one's here to speak, it'll be closed. But just if you could try once again. Yes, ma'am. Courtney Zachary was the first person signed up. Courtney, if you're on the line, um, please unmute and let us know. Okay. I feel like I keep okay. hearing somebody speak up when we say her name. Courtney Zachary. Okay. okay. Um, the next person we had signed up is Teresa Dobbs. Is Teresa Dobbs with us joined in our meeting? Okay. All right. Thank you so much, clerk. Uh, yes, citizens, we definitely tried to reach out and I'm hoping it's, it's not a technology glitch, but we provided all the necessary information to get in. This public hearing is, it was open and being that we have no one uh, who has appeared to speak, this public hearing is now closed. Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions or comments regarding any, any uh, items that uh, Director Valentine shared with us regarding um, the renaming of these streets. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, Commissioner Guider. Yes, Commissioner Guider, District 4, Commissioner Guider. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Miguel, um, on the right hand side where the old post road, the yellow line, the dotted yellow line, it doesn't seem to include the Walbrook Farm. And it does not even take it all the way back up to Highway 78. But you're you're talking about that entire stretch of the old post road, right? Just want yes, to make that, sure. That is correct. And and the reason for that is that we uh, in the map we try to capture uh, lots that were um, at either addressed or abutting the road. Uh, some of these parcels along Veterans Memorial carry a Veterans Memorial address and their driveway is from Veterans Memorial. So some of those would not be affected. Others, um, if there is no development on there, then the, the road would be named. And when the development comes in, uh, they would have to use the, the name, uh, the new name. Uh, no, but this, is, point, this is a farm and his driveway is off of the old post road section but the yellow line doesn't seem to include his farm. I just want to make sure his farm is a, a, our prior sheriff, uh, uh, Walbrook, that it does include his, his address also. Yes, ma'am. The, the intent is for the, the section that is now disconnected from Post Road to all be named all the way to... Um, to 78 to be named uh, uh, Old Post Road. All right, and will they keep the same number or will they we just tried, change? Yes, we, we tried, uh, if possible, uh, to, to give them a number that was close to what they had, but uh, the, the, uh, the way that addresses are assigned 
uh, that was not all, always possible. So they, they would, in all probability, uh, may get a new number as well. But each one of the property owners was given notice as to what their new address would be, right? Yes, yes. They were provided uh, the list indicating uh, and a copy of this map as well, indicating uh, uh, the current address and what the new proposed address would be. All right, thank you. And I yield back. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Guider. Any other questions from the board? Okay, with that being said, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the public hearing with uh, to consider the street name and address changes in the area of the relocated Post Road and Veterans Memorial Highway? Yes, ma'am, I make a motion to approve it. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? We have a motion in a second. Please uh, start off with our uh, District 1, and then we'll just work all the way down from District 1, 2, 3, 4. If you just uh, state your name and, and, and your response. Commissioner Mitchell, District 1, a yes. Kel Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Terania Carthen, District 3, yes. Ann Jones Guider, District 4, yes. Ramona Jackson Jones, the chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much. And we'll move on to our next item, uh, which is tab number five, to consider amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinance, Article 5 of Chapter 14, Section 14 74 speed limits to reduce the speed limits on Riverside Parkway and State Route 92, 154, and 166. Director Valentin again. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh this particular effort uh, began again quite a while ago. Uh, we've had uh, a number of uh, complaints about speeding in uh, along those roads. Uh, we also have an existing uh, or a proposed project uh, for sidewalks to be added on a segment of State Route 92 near uh, the, the high school. And as part of that, uh, we um, uh, started uh, discussions with the Georgia DOT about installation of a pedestrian signal to, cr to be able to cross um, State Route 92. Uh, they indicated at the time that uh, pedestrian signals um, would not be able to be um, installed on a road that carried a speed limit of 55 miles an hour. And so um, we then engaged them in, in the discussions about reducing the speed limit in conjunction with the speeding that was being experienced in that area. Uh, it took uh, quite a number of iterations, uh, discussions back and forth. Uh, eventually, uh, we were able to provide them sufficient information to give him a comfort level that uh, the reduction was uh, appropriate uh, for the area, uh, both for uh, Riverside Parkway and State Route 92. And uh, that is one of the first steps in the process of getting uh, a speed reduction in place. Initially, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. The, the Board of Commissioners certainly has uh, every right to assign speed limits on county roads. However, in order to be able to enforce the speed limit, it has to be sanctioned both by the Georgia Department of Transportation and the State Public Safety Division through the radar permit. And so, uh, the first step in the process was getting uh, the Georgia Department of Transportation on board. Uh, they are now on board with this change. And th the next step is for the board to consider uh, reducing the speed limit uh, in the interest of safety, um, in the interest of um, uh, being able to try and entice the public uh, to reduce the speed through that area. Uh, the character of the area has changed over the last uh, year or two. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, new development uh, along the Riverside Parkway, as well as State Route 92. 
there are some other um, developments of regional imp impact that are being um, um, run through the process now for approval as well. And so the, the character of the area is changing and it is appropriate to consider reduction of the speed limit. In order to accomplish that, uh, the, the board uh, has to change the code. The speed limits are embedded in the county code, section 1474. And so uh, that is uh, where we are today uh, for consideration. It requires a public hearing uh, to, to be held uh, to, to do that. And that brings us to where we are today. Thank you so much, Director uh, Valentin. Certainly, uh, we appreciate you, your delivery and uh, just bringing us all, to, uh, the Board of Commissioners and also the citizens up to speed regarding uh, these, uh, certainly Riverside Parkway and State Route 92, 154 and 166. Uh, this meet, uh, this, uh, the public hearing is now open and our clerk, would you please uh, state, we have, I believe, four individuals who signed up and you can read uh, certainly the rules and instructions. Um, and again, we would just ask that when you're called on to speak, you state your name and address for the record. Uh, please keep your comments to three minutes or under. When your time is up, I will notify you and ask you to wrap up your comments. And once your public comment is over, we would ask that you mute your phone or um, your microphone if you're on Teams. Okay, thank you. Again, this public hearing is now open. And anyone here to speak for um, this this uh, speed limit change. Please uh, unmute your camera. I mean, uh, turn your camera on and unmute your microphone, please. And state your name and your address. Okay. Would you like for me to call them? Yeah, call yeah, call their names. I want to make sure they. Okay. And again, they didn't specify if they were for or against. Um, the first one we had signed up was Eric Potter. Mr. Potter, I see him. There. there he is. Okay. There you are, Mr. Potter. Thank you. I am here. And uh, first of all, uh, I do want to thank the commissioners for uh, providing this meeting in this format during this time. Uh, it's been excellent that I've been able to participate and have had to put myself at risk to be there. So, uh, I do appreciate that and wanted to communicate that to you guys. Um, I do appreciate uh, the interest of safety. Uh, I'm actually a safety engineer myself. I don't study highway traffic. I actually am involved as an aerospace engineer. Um, and I spent a lot of time looking at data. And one of my concerns with the proposal here that I wanted to convey to you tonight has to do with the, uh, the data and its availability to the public at, at this point. I live at 3105 Cunningham Lane, which is in tributary. Uh, many of you know it. It's developments that existed probably since the mid-2000s. I've lived here since 2008, so about 12 years. Um, so I'm quite familiar with Riverside Parkway. And honestly, I think Riverside Parkway travels very comfortably at 55 miles an hour. I think the road speed limit is what I would consider practical. Um, and I'm, I'm concerned that a reduction in the speed limit for that particular road, I, I really have no objection to the other roads. And I'm not so far as to say that I'm against Riverside. I, I'm against it at this time for not having been privy to data to support it. And, you know, one of the reasons I say that is because in my research, I've come across guidance from the Federal Highway Administration. And one of the things that they suggest is that appropriate speed limits are a prerequisite for effective and sustainable speed management. In terms of traffic law, speed limits should reflect the maximum reasonable and safe speed for normal conditions. Now, having lived in this area for 12 years, I can absolutely tell you uh, without any question in my mind that Riverside Parkway travels very comfortably at 55 miles an hour. I think some of the complaints you've probably seen are issues of safety that I would call to question. People traveling in excess of 70 miles an hour. I've actually seen some accidents on Riverside Parkway that are a result of illegal passing, um, which I, I think reduction of a speed limit might incentivize those that are already illegally passing to 
illegally pass more and potentially incentivize other individuals that currently aren't uh, illegally passing vehicles to illegally pass themselves. So I would like to present that to the, to the commission tonight as something worth considering. And, and when we look at these kinds of things, um, particularly as engineers, we have to understand that sometimes our best intentions have unintended consequences. So with respect to what the proposal is, particularly with Riverside Parkway, I would like to ask that the commission reconsider the reduction of the speed limit. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Potter. And Jennifer, because I, I'm unable to see all the uh, our citizens, if we could just call their names and they certainly can state and I'll just have to uh, um, just keep a tab of who is for and against. I have, I can do that. Yes, ma'am, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, the next person signed up is Keith Burnett. Yep, I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, we can yep, hear we you. We can hear you. Okay, um, Keith Burnett, I live at 9936 Barnesbury Road in Douglasville in the Tributary neighborhood. Um, I can certainly respect my neighbor's uh, opinion uh, that, that just spoke. Um, just a couple of things, I've lived here since 2006. I have seen the conditions change quite uh, dramatically, um, specifically on Riverside Parkway. I, I'm uh, also for uh, reducing it uh, on 166, but this is specific to Riverside Parkway. Um, I'm, I'm also for reducing it there. Um, according to the <clears throat> Department of Transportation, what, what, let's talk about what goes into an engineering speed study, right? The speeds of the motorist, it, as uh, Mr. Potter said, under normal conditions, traffic volume, roadway type, roadway features, uh, number of spacing of driveways or intersections, site distances, on-street parking presence, pedestrian or bicyclist activity, crash history. So out of all of those bullet points, let's think about how many have changed over the last couple of years, specifically on Riverside Parkway. I can tell you that bicyclist activities increased, pedestrians are probably afraid like bicyclists uh, to get on Riverside at 55 miles an hour. I know I would be. Um, some of the other things that should be considered uh, in this is that studies should be repeated as these land uses and traffic characteristics change, as Mr. Valentin said. Um, within those traffic engineering studies, they use what's called the 85th percentile, where there's an assumption that 85% of the volume will be uh, will be uh, driven, excuse me, at or below that speed limit, and 15% exceed it. As Mr. Potter said, there have been instances, fatalities, unfortunately, on Riverside where people are either passing or traveling at, at high speeds. Um, and speaking of high speeds, uh, one other thing I want to mention, as as uh, noted in the AAA Foundation for Traffic Study. High-speed travels increase the risk of crashing and injuries when collisions occur. Speeding is only one factor, but it has been a factor in more than a quarter of U.S. crash deaths, fatalities, in more than 30 years. Um, even a, a small increase or decrease can have uh, dramatic changes. A pedestrian struck at a vehicle at 25 miles an hour has a 25% risk of a fatality, a 50% uh, risk at 33 miles an hour, and 75% risk of a fatality at 41 miles an hour. And again, that's according to the AAA Foundation for Traffic Stacy Safety. So having said all of that, I agree. Just I agree. Sure, I agree and support reducing the, the, um, the traffic um, reduction in speed. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Burnett. Thank you as well. And also thank you, Mr. Potter. So we have, who do you have next, clerk? Um, the next Please. person we have signed up is Marcus Durr. This is Marcus. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Please go ahead. State your name and address. Sorry. My name is Marcus Durr. I live at 1705 Bankwell Closeway, and I'm part of the Riverbanks community of Tributary. Uh, I am speaking in opposition of this change. 
I, I believe that changing the speed limit or is the equivalent of treating a symptom to the problem while ignoring the actual problem along Riverside Parkway. And like Eric, I'm only speaking about Riverside Parkway. I'm not speaking about 90T. The problem with Riverside Parkway is really its infrastructure. It lacks the infrastructure to intermingle residents that are traveling via car, the semi-truck trailers that are traveling, as well as the pedestrians that are using it for walking, running, and bicycle traffic. As I think the gentleman who spoke to me before me, these are all mixed uses or, or a combination of traffic that use Riverside, and the infrastructure just lacks the ability to support it all. It's not the cause, it's not the result of speeding in itself. I've lived in riverbanks for almost 14 years, uh, a little bit more, and, and I've seen the patterns change as the road continues to industrialize. And as the road continues to industrialize, this prevents challenges to all the type of traffic that's being used. Uh, during the, the July 16th City Council legislative work session, I hope you guys aren't competing with one another, in about one hour and 50 minutes, a resident described his typical commute in the morning along Riverside. Much of his commute involved him traveling plus or minus 38 miles per hour as he was joined by 10 other cars behind one or two other, one to two trucks. That is the norm. And that is the norm beyond just early in the morning and travel. So as a result, you can't have continuously speeding down the entire corridor of Riverside Parkway between Fairburn Road and Thornton Road for the entire length of the parkway. There may be instances where there are some speeding on the weekends, but it's not something that's a crisis as described by some of the, your earlier speakers. On the weekend, we have the largest number of cyclists that travel that road. And as you know, cyclists can travel two abreast on a road. And on Riverside, those cyclists have to use the actual lane as opposed to this, the bicycle lane because it's in disrepair in lots of areas. There's growth within the biking lanes, prevents it impassable. As a result, drivers have to traverse over into the opposite lane and risk hitting cars on in an oncoming manner because of the lack of infrastructure. Again, if you talk to residents and you talk about traveling Riverside on any given day, there are trucks with trailers and other cars that litter the biking lanes and the sides of the road throughout Riverside. You have to basically try to uh, avoid these obstacles when traveling. And since some of these, these vehicles stick out into the road when they're parked on the side or across the biking lanes, you can't ignore them and you have to slow in passing them. So again, all these obstacles, whether it's cyclists, cars, reduces the ability to travel at high speed. Please just wrap up your comment. Okay, so and, and wrapping up, my, my summation is that I've only been in one accident on Riverside and that was while parked at a traffic light when a semi hit me and the, and the driver said that they couldn't see me over the, their cab, which had nothing to do with speeding. So I definitely oppose speeding reduction on Riverside Road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Durr. The next person we have signed up, and I apologize if I mispronounce your last name, is Rick Collie or Callie. Are you on the line? Okay. Mr. Rick Callie. Well. Thank you so much. This, with, uh, since Mr. Kelly is not responding, and I'm trying to give him just a few more seconds. This, well, this public hearing is now closed. Uh, Board of Commissioners, certainly this is an opportunity for you to weigh in. Uh, Board of Commissioners, anyone have any comments? Or? Madam Chair? Yes, Vice Chair. Chairman Robson, I see you, Commissioner Carthen. Okay. Did she go first or do I go? I saw her face first, so can I? I want to, Commissioner Carthen. Okay. Commissioner Carthen. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Chairman sorry. Jones. Um, you can have the last word, home rule, Commissioner Robson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Director uh, Valentine, 
the studies that were done on um, Riverside in regards to speeding, were those studies done both on weekdays and weekend traffic studies? Uh, no, the traffic was measured during the weekday. However, uh, because of historical data, we can interpolate what the weekend traffic is. Uh, but they were done following the federal highway guidelines. In fact, uh, one of the things that, uh, that the Georgia Department of Transportation insisted on was that we do, in addition to the justification that we submitted to them, that we provide the Federal Highway uh, Administration um, analysis for what the appropriate speed limit ought to be for that route. And so that was done, and, and uh, that um, uh, convinced the uh, Georgia DOT that um, uh, that it was prudent to change the speed limit. Okay, and the speed limit will be uh, that is being considered will be decreased from 55 to what are you proposing? Okay, to answer that question, I'm going to try and share my screen again, and see if I can show the map because it varies. It, okay. it varies by segment. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, can you see the the map? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, the speed limit, and this is uh, Route 92, 154, 70, 166. It carries so many different um, uh, numbers, but um, the, the the section starting from the top of the of the slide. There is a section of, of 92, and uh, this would be Route 166 coming in from Fulton. Uh, that is currently 45 mile an hour, and it will stay at 45 mile an hour. Uh, then the next segment in yellow um, is, is the segment that is currently 55 mile an hour speed limit that would be reduced to 45 miles an hour. Uh, and that carries through all the way to the vicinity of Boundary Waters and the new uh, roundabout that was constructed there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be 45 mile an hour along that stretch highlighted in yellow. In this section here in front of the new Manchester High School, uh, you might be able to see the yellow in the background, but also a blue highlight and that is the school um, zone um, would typically is set at 10 miles an hour below the speed limit. So because the speed limit would be reduced to 45, then the speed limit of that school zone would be reduced to 35 uh, when school is in session. And then the area towards um, uh, the roundabout, the approaches to the roundabout on all directions would be 35 miles an hour. And some some of that section of 166 presently is um, 55 mile an hour. That would be going to 35 as it approaches the roundabout. Roundabouts, as you may well know, are intended to reduce speed and, and also improve maneuverability so it, through an intersection. But uh, in this particular case, because of the existing high speed of travel approaching that intersection, uh, the, the Georgia DOT is requesting that, um, that uh, we transition from 45 to 35 mile an hour so vehicles can maneuver through that roundabout. So it does vary. Um, that is um, the, the various segments along 166 and 92 and route uh, 70 and 154. Uh, the other slide, uh, this will show what it's going to do along um, uh, Riverside Parkway, and that is strictly going from 55 to 45 mile an hour the entire stretch. Uh, we've had discussions with the city. Uh, some of this uh, road segment is within the city, and, and they would have to enact the same changes, uh, and they've indicated that they would do so uh, to be uh, in in concert with uh, what the county's uh, proposing or 
what we're suggesting the county consider. Okay. And also, so those uh, entities along that stretch of highway, I know it's during the pandemic, but did you get a chance to speak with any of those? I know there's a fire department, one of our fire departments along that route. Have you had a chance to speak with them in regards to this? I have not had specific uh, discussions with the fire department. We've had extensive discussions with the sheriff's office. Okay. Um, and um, But we have not... Um, had discussions with the fire departments uh, specifically or uh, the businesses along that route. We have, over the last uh, several months, years, uh, received complaints from them of, of this okay. along that along the road. So okay. I would think that this goes to the issue, their desire to have lower speed limit. Okay, got you. Thank you so much. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I'll I'll, I'll be um, succinct. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge uh, both communities, both the Anawake community um, that was advocating for the crosswalk and, and what was in their interest, and also uh, um, uh, my neighbors in tributary and riverbanks that advocated for theirs. Uh, directly with the administration, I only got involved earlier this year uh, once it came to my attention to try to, because they were related, it was all about speed. And, and so it was a delight to, 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 to just come on board and help accelerate this because it is a concern. But, but here's being here as long as I've been for 30 years and watching Riverside be cut and watching Riverside become what it became and Anawiki came online, right? So Anawiki is the largest community in my district at 1900 strong, let's say 2000. Tributary is the second largest, roughly around, we'll give them a thousand just for the sake of the conversation that they're building out. What you've had over there since they, they've mentioned since the, the Great Recession in 2008 is that you've had a lot of businesses come in here and a lot of residences. And so to Mr. Durr out of Riverbank, like, no, I get it. Right. So they cut that street as a cut through. But it, 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 it just sort of, you got commercial and residential, and you drop that much right there all at once there's no thoughtfulness right it was only after the fact that we put the development standard in place to put sidewalks into place but it's hard to retrofit a community or road our hand is dealt and so one of the things we tried to do with the bike lanes which didn't come online until what 2015 um after we took over um obviously through the ses process riverside for maintenance from the city meaning the county it's one of those well let's do the best we can um, whoever architects this, the previous administration, which is prior to the prior administration, it is, it, it, it just, they weren't thoughtful. I've got to be honest. And so here you are, to your point, you've got all these mixed use, these mixed interests. These are huge communities, huge commercial developments, trucks and cars and bikes. And it's like, okay, now I've walked down Riverside and like, okay, them trucks come by me and I'm trying to walk in a bike lane and, it's, and it, they've got to coexist. Right? So it's all about coexisting. It's not an absolute one way or the other way. It's like, okay, how do we make this hand work? Right? So it's like, so let's, let's find an, an equilibrium. If you know anything about um, Riverside, it sits on the top of a hill. Some of you guys, this community, you can see literally to downtown Atlanta. You're on the top of a hill. You're coming down Riverside. You know how fast in the rain you're going through there. Now, I get it. It's not all the time at rush hour. We get the cattle crawl. Everybody understands it on my side of town. I get it. But what do we do, right? And you you got to err on the side of operational safety. Let, let's slow this down just a little bit. I mean, when they um, when when the city made the decision to allow full truck traffic to go across that bridge, that was material. But it was all for the, what in the interest of commercial. You know, no half loads. We did full load up, but half load back. No, no, you got this cut through a full trucks, and people be rolling through there, and it's going to keep growing. So here's our issue. It's going to keep growing. The density is going to keep increasing. So let's get ahead of this. And so for my point, um, it was uh, I took this into our obviously transportation committee. Uh, but again, it was because of what I heard the citizens thought like, look, can y'all be more thoughtful about this? Let's deal with crossings. Let's let's how do we make these these elements coexist? It is not the best. Plan, I acknowledge. 
I want to acknowledge it on your behalf. I get it. But I appreciate Miguel who came on board and what, 17 Miguel? And he yes. jumped right on this. And he, he did a good job of sort of addressing it and, and doing the best he can. He pulled both corridors together. They were related. I mean, Miguel, how many miles is this? If Riverside is seven, seven and a half miles, how many miles does the 166.92 give us? How many it, miles? It's, it's probably about the same. It's probably going to be about uh, six, 17, 18 miles. 17, 18 miles, almost a marathon, um, but but duly noted. Um, I just, Madam Chair, I just wanted to highlight, um, I get it, this is a public hearing, and the whole point was to hear the citizens. So I just want to acknowledge, I heard you. I know for every yes, somebody wants a no, for everyone, somebody wants a yes. And so I'm sensitive to that, but um, I, I'm interested, my other colleagues weigh in on this thing, but I do support, um, obviously, the initiative they put forth. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Any other comments from the Board of Commissioners before I call the question? Any other comments? Okay. All right, if there are no other comments, I will call the question. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to consider amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinance, Article 5 of Chapter 14, Section 14-74 for the speed limit to reduce the limits on Riverside Parkway and State Route 92-154 and 166. So moved. Yeah, so moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We have a motion and a second. When I call, if we could start from uh, District 1, please call your, uh, state your name and your response and clerk please make a note of all the responses district one will start with you and all the way down numerically commissioner one commissioner mitchell district one uh yes okay uh kelly robinson district two commissioner yes district three commissioner Tarnia carthen yes okay District 4, uh, Commissioner Ann jones Guider, yes. Okay, the Chairman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, Ramona Jackson-Jones, my response is yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote, uh, Board of Commissioners, and the motion carries. All right, thank you. We're going to move on to the next item. The next item is tab number 6, as we are to consider amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinance by adding, adding a new ordinance regarding hazardous pay and this will be uh, introduced by our legal department. Uh, Attorney Bernard, are you Madam on the Chair, line? Can you hear me all right? I can barely hear you. Attorney Bernard, are you there? I'm on the line. Can you hear me, Madam Chair? Yeah, I can hear you now getting a little bit of reverberation. But anyway, uh, Madam Chair and board members, this simply is a proposed amendment to your code which would allow you to award hazard pay during times of an emergency as declared by the governor or uh, the chair or, and as continued by this board from time to time. It is not a specific all allocation of funds or it is not an immediate raise for anybody or a hazard pay award. It simply allows it to be done. We discovered at the beginning of COVID that a lot of uh, reimbursement plans required you to have a policy already in place uh, prior to the disaster before you could get uh, any kind of relief on hazardous pay awards. And so this comes to this board at the suggestion of this board that we have one in place for future uh, episodes of emergency. So that's all this before you tonight. No effect on the budget. Thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. Clerk, did we have anyone sign up for the public hearing tonight? No, ma'am, we did not have anybody sign up for the public hearing. Okay, well, I still will open it and close it just for formality purpose. This uh, public hearing is now open. And if we have anybody here to speak, please speak you had to sign up in advance okay this public hearing is now closed board of commissioners now i will call the question 
if you don't have any comments before I call the question. The question is, do we have a motion to consider amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinance by adding a new ordinance regarding hazard uh, pay? So moved. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We have a motion and a second. Chair. Uh huh. Okay, can, can you explain to me? I, I missed out on this. My apologies. Can someone in, kind of enlighten me on this hazardous pay again so I can make sure I got what I'm getting ready to vote on? Okay. Uh, Attorney uh, Bernard. I can, I'll be happy to, Madam Chair. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, th th while you can award hazard pay at any time that you'd like, uh, this body can. Uh, what we discovered during the COVID pandemic was that some of the requirements to consider for reimbursement any hazardous pay is you had to have on your books an ordinance that already existed before the hazard. So this board at its suggestion, I think Commissioner Carthen suggested that we go ahead and get one on the books in case there is a future problem so that it'll already be in place. So we we're proposing this really for the future it would have no immediate impact on COVID or anything like that. And it is not an allocation of funds today, nor will it have any impact on the budget. It merely is putting in line a requirement for future GEMA, FEMA, and other emergencies so that you could seek reimbursement to the extent that you had to award hazardous pay based on an emergency that comes uh, before, before you in the future. Got you. Understood now. Thank you. Okay. Because I was really under the impression that it had something to do with what we previously just went through or what we're going through now, though. So, but that has no effect to this, correct? That's correct, sir. This this is separate. That this decision regarding hazard pay can be made by y'all at any time by a proper motion. But th th it, that would affect the budget. This simply put something in place that would allow you to seek reimbursement should such an award be given in, in light of an emergency in the future. I get it. Understood. Thank you, sir, for clarifying. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. All right, we, we have the, the question is already on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second, and please start with District 1 and uh, state your uh, name and your response. District 1, Commissioner, uh, yes. Okay. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Lenia Carson, District 3, yes. Okay. Ann Jones Guider, District 4, yes. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, yes. Board of Commissioners, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Thank Madam you so Chair, much. Can I, yeah, yes. Chair, can I uh -huh. uh, Jennifer Moore, did you get who the motion was made by in the second on that? Yes, sir, I did. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Attorney Bernard. We're going to move on to tab number seven, which is our new business. Board of Commissioners, we have a tab seven through 11 is related to new business. Tab number seven uh, states authorization for chairman to execute amended grant fund employee contract of Christine Callahan to reflect supervisory task and grant approval salary change. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? Well, before I call a motion, I have Jennifer King here. Jennifer, I see you popped up. Could you explain this to the Board of Commissioners before I call for a vote? Please explain. Yes, okay. Um, this is a position in juvenile programs that is funded by the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council um, at 100% grant funds. So this is just money coming out of the grant um, that needs to be spent pretty timely so that we don't lose it. Okay. Any other contributions? Ms. Hobson, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, no, ma'am, I don't have anything to add. Okay. All right, Board of Commissioners, before I call, you have any questions for uh, Ms. King and or Ms. Hobson? Okay, I'll call the question. <laughs> Board of Commissioners. Oh, okay, Commissioner Carthen, there you are. Uh-huh, I do. So, uh, 
We can't hardly hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ms. King, this this is for you. Can you explain to us why we're doing this? Why why are we at this juncture doing the pandemic, um, expanding um, this for this particular uh, employee in your um, this, in your department? Sure. Um, before the pandemic, we were made aware of some changes um, in some drivers for our programs. So we were picking up a little more responsibilities, in particular for this position, um, some supervisory. Um, requirements. So we had already been in the talks of, of, you know, moving in a normal process. However, the pandemic came in, kind of shut us, you know, down for a little while, not sure how everything was going to work out. So now that we're back able to work with the grant sources um, fully, then we are now able to ask for this, um, where normally it might have been done even before now, you know, our grant cycles run at different times during the year. Commissioner Carlton, did she answer your question? She did. I just okay. wanted it to, to be certain that we don't have to uh, amend the budget and that it wouldn't be coming out of our funds. It would just be strictly coming out of the funds that you have. And if we don't use these grant funds, we have to give them back. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Okay. And we certainly don't want to give them back. We want to utilize no. <laughs> them at, at all costs. Exactly. All right. So I just wanted that to, to be certain so that the public would understand um, why we're doing this for you. Not that we're showing you favoritism, but we are showing that we want to utilize the funds in the best possible way. So yeah. thank you. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Okay, if there are no other comments, we're going to move on and I'll call the question. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve authorization for chairman to execute an amended grant funded employee contract uh, for a Christine Callahan to reflect supervisory task and grant approved salary change? I'll move. Okay, do we have a second? second? Okay. Second. Okay, the motion was made by Commissioner Mitchell, second by Commissioner uh, Guider. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We, we have a motion and a second. Please uh, start with District 1 and uh, with your response. And clerk, please uh, record accordingly. Commissioner Mitchell, yes. District 2. I, I see he's nodding, yes. Okay. okay. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Okay, District 3. Terenia Carthen, District 3, yes. District 4. Ann Jones Guider, District 4, yes. And Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, uh, my response is yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, for some reason, I've lost my photograph photograph on my screen, but I am not going to interrupt and you can, can you hear me? I just want to keep talking. You're fine. We'll go to, we'll go to tab number eight, authorization to uh, purchase right of way and easements from parcels number 00250150109 located at zero Stewart uh, Mill Road in connection with the Stewart Mill Road and Reynolds Road intersection improvement project, waive the lien release and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Director Valentin, I don't know if anybody need any clarification on this, but Director Valentin, are you available if the Board of Commissioners have any questions? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay, the Board of Commissioners, any questions before I call the question? I... Okay. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to authorize to purchase right away of the, the easements for the parcels that I just mentioned, 00250150109? located still uh, Stuart Mill Road. Yes, ma'am, so moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we, the motion was made by Commissioner uh, Ann jones Guider and the second by Vice Chairman and uh, District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion I, and a second. Uh, yes, Commissioner. Yes. Ma'am, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want the public to know this is for that intersection there at Stuart Mill Road and Reynolds Road, that we will be adding 
a through lane through <laughs> and a turn lane right there. So this is, uh, I think, three out of 10. Is that right, uh, Miguel? Uh, right of way acquisitions? Actually, uh, the one that you're considering right now would make it five out of 10. And there's another three that you consider to make it eight out of 10. Oh, okay, that's even better. So I just want the public to know what these uh, easements and right of ways are for, and it's to improve that intersection that's been a bad, bad intersection for many, many years. We're finally moving on this. <laughs> so I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Guider. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Please start with District 1 with your response. State your name and your response. District 1. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell, a yes. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Tarenia Carthen, District 3, yes. Ann Jones Goddard, District 4, yes. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote, Board of Commissioners, and the motion carries. We're going to move on to tab number nine authorization to purchase right of way and easements from parcel. 00250150049 located at 0 Stewart Mill Road and parcel 00250007 in connection with the Stewart Mill Road and Reynolds Road intersection improvement project waive the lien release and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents board of commissioners uh, do we have a motion to approve so move Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Uh, please uh, indicate your response and we'll start with District 1, Commissioner. District 1, Commissioner, yes. Kelly Robinson, Kelly. District 2, yes. Yeah. Tarania Carthen, District 3, yes. Ann Jones Guider, District 4, yes. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman. The Board of Commissioners, my response is yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carried. We're going to move on to tab number 10 authorization to purchase right way and easements from parcels number 00250150007, located at 5032 Stewart Mill Road, in connection with the Stewart Mill Road and Rental Roads, um, Reynolds Road intersection improvement project waive the lien release and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. Please, we'll start with District 1. Uh, provide your name and your response. The district. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell, a yes. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Terenia Carthen, District 3, yes. Ann Jones Guider, District 4, yes. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, yes. Board of Commissioners, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're going to move on to tab number 11 authorization to submit objection to proposed annexation and rezoning requests from the City of Austell of Parcels 208. 257, 252, and 253 of the 18th District along Causey Road. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve this objection? So moved, Second. Chairman Jones. Okay. Second. Second, okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion and... Um, we have any discussions, Board of Commissioners, and I did see a map come up, and I'm assuming our Ron Roberts is there. And just for the sake of the public, uh, Ron, I saw uh, somebody placed a map up. If you could just share that with the Board of Commissioners, and I know this is part of their discussions, but if you could share that briefly, and then I'll con move on and finish and wrap up our uh, vote. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you for the time. Yes, based on the, the discussion during the work session yesterday, we updated the correspondence per for uh, Ken's advice um, and put that in your packet, objecting to the uh, to the annexation on um, two things, uh, legally incorrect notification and the fact that it orphans uh, the uh, 39 acres 
uh, that we, we talked about yesterday. So we, we've actually uh, updated that and uh, have it in your packet for signature um, and, and ready to move forward with, with, uh, with whatever the board directs. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, Board of Commissioners, I wanted to interject that because I wanted to make sure that you had full understanding of what we're planning to vote on or what, what, what we are voting on. We have a motion and a second on the floor. If there are no other questions or comments from the Board of Commissioners, I'll move forward. We have a motion and a second. All in favor or against, please in a state your district, your name and your response. I'll start with District 1. District 1. Oh, I'm sorry. I was on mute. Uh, uh, <laughs> District 1, Commissioner Ian. Okay. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Okay. Terenia Carthen, District 3, yes. Ann Jones Guider, District 4, yes. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, next we have our consent agenda. And it's starting with top tab number 12 is authorization to accept. And please be aware that all uh, items are subject to final legal review. Uh, we'll start with tab number 12 authorization to accept the fiscal year 21 criminal justice coordinating council justice incentive grant in the amount of uh, $251,909 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 13 authorization to approve a contract with the department of Human Services Division of Family and Children's Services for Juvenile Programs Administration to provide drug screen services and authorize, uh, authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 14, authorization to approve Greystone Power Corporation's right-of-way easement in order to install a transformer at the new Boundary Waters Recre Recreation Center as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 15, authorization to approve prime construction change order in the amount of $29,235.09 for construction of a handicap ramp from the lower ball fields to the new concession stand at Our Park to be funded through 2016 funds and as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. I'm going to ask it, everybody just if you would mute your microphones. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Please mute your microphones. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on to tab number 16, authorization for Douglas County Sheriff's Office to renew a contract with the Administrative Solutions Incorporations for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office Jail Inmate Medical Plan effective July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending legal review. Tab number 17, authorization for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office to renew stop loss insurance agreement with HCC Life Insurance Company and authorize the chairman to sign all re related documents pending legal review. Tab number 18, authorization to accept funds from the State Court Technology Fund in the amount of $9,955.68 for laptops for the State Court Clerk's Office staff. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agendas. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners, on any particular topic? Yes. Yes. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, please. Do you have the floor? I, I think it's what, number 16? Yes, the number 16 um, is authorization for the renewal of the Administrative Solutions contract with the, with the Sheriff's Office. Correct, is correct. that the one? Okay. So is, um, do we have anyone on the line from the Sheriff's Office? Major Holmes, are you available? Mm. Uh, County Administrator, are you able to speak about this contract? Do you remember what uh, Major Holmes shared with us on yesterday at the work session? Um, vaguely, Madam Chair, but... <clears throat> County Administrator. 
<laughs> yeah, I said yeah, vaguely, so no, oh, I'm not. Okay. You said vaguely, okay. No, they're uh, supposed to be online um, every meeting. Vice Chairman Robinson, I don't have anyone on the line that can speak to this again. Uh, I know we had conversations yesterday, and I don't know if there was anything specific you wanted to highlight. I apologize. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Had, I had concerns about the specific contract. I don't know why we got feedback. feedback. Can you guys hear me okay? Turn your, thank you. Uh, my, my issue with this contract is that it, it's, it's duration. Um, th I believe if I'm not accurate, and see this, this is, I feel uncomfortable because no, nobody is able to address the ask. Uh, this contract this is contract, it being awarded it being for 16 years. That's longer than that's longer than that, that's, 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 that's been a lot of, lot of service providers. And, and, and while we get it, get it, um, that they, they are leading on out into the community. community. We learned yesterday, they also they involved, involved, uh, and perhaps, and perhaps, and perhaps what, what was it? Was it was difference? And I, I, and just, I just, Nobody's here Nobody's answer my question, so I, I, I can't hear this, uh, this one by itself, but I don't know about to be hitting the line for this, so, so uh, Mark, of that, of that. Uh, Mark, or uh, see if we can get someone on the line, please. No, it's not, no, I don't want to slow down. I'm just making a, a point. I'm just making a point. I'd like, I'd like I'd to like condition, condition for my support. Or, um, we're going to revisit this contract uh, at a period in time. We need to um, revisit it. Are we getting our, our true value? Um, again, I'm going to give a little room. I, I could have took it out of consent agenda, uh, but I chose not to. Um, so I, I just need that to hear but this will be the last time I'll support this uh, unless my peers bring in such a position. So that's a condition of my support is that this will be the last time for the contract without going back out. I yield. I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Anything else from the Board of Commissioners? Okay, with that being ma said. Ma'am, ma'am. Mm -hmm. His, uh, his, his audio, audio is terrible, terrible. coming from me. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, I hardly understand what he was saying. Can you understand yeah. me, Commissioner Guy? I hear an echo there. Oh, there. Oh, there. Mm. TJ or Rick, uh, can you all see what we can do to make some adjustments? We're beginning to get a lot of feedback. Yeah, we'll keep someone's open mic. Yeah. Okay. I, again, I encourage everyone to turn your mic off. Okay, Board of Commissioners, if there's no other questions with this for, about the consent agendas or concerns, we're going to move. I've got it on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Chairman, Jones. Chairman Jones? Yes, uh, Commissioner Carthen. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, if you can, you, you, you're, you're mine. mine. Okay, I will. Let me, but I'm a, I need to finish calling the question and I'll mute it, okay? I, 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 I would like the floor. Oh, you got it. Okay, I'm going to mute it now. Go for it. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's much better. Okay. Yes, so I concur with uh, Commissioner Robinson. Uh, we need to really take a look at those contracts that are 16, 17, 18 years, even those contracts that go more than two cycles. We have to, and I know this is a, a sheriff's pounds. Uh, he's elected official. However, the best, uh, best way to ensure that we are not just giving away contracts uh, and making sure that we are getting the most value uh, is to make sure that we bid these contracts out or we take a look at others. Uh, we can't just blindly keep uh, consenting to contracts uh, for this long. That just seems, it just doesn't seem right. We wouldn't do it uh, in, in the private sector. I don't know why we continue to do these practices in public sectors. But at any rate, uh, I definitely want to concur with uh, Commissioner Robinson. Uh, this is one of the things that we do talk about in the, in the uh, Purchasing Oversight Committee meeting. Uh, is these types of contracts that continually get, you know, 
reinstate it over and over and over again. We don't know if the value is good. We don't know if the dollar value is good. So that's something we do need to take a look at. Uh, so again, um, hopefully uh, the sheriff's office uh, will get some type of, of feedback from us or from you or from Mark stating that moving forward and not just the sheriff's office. I, I would like for this to go out to all of those who we have to okay the contract for them is to make sure that they start using best practices and start getting uh, best quotes. So when we ask these questions, uh, we will have uh, answers to them. Uh, but with that, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I just wanna make sure. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Certainly I agree in the private sector, uh, usually contracts or uh, what happened, they bid it out about at least every four to five years and, and 14 to 16 years is a long time. And certainly I, uh, I'm so glad that you are leading and the chairwoman of the purchasing oversight committee. That's one committee this county has never had. And that, that's gonna allow you and certainly Vice Chairman Robinson to, uh, who serves as the vice chairman of that committee to take a deeper dive. And so we can look at those uh, co uh, contracts that have been here uh, that really I call it aged out and just need an opportunity if they could always rebid, but they definitely need to make sure that uh, that we are following the process for at least they need to be re uh, rebidded out. That's just part of uh, what I would like to see going forward. So I really appreciate your statement. And uh, with that being said, Board of Commissioners, if nobody else ha have any other questions, we're going to continue on. We have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Yes. Yes, yes, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. Okay, if you will mute your mics, but I would like to go back and hear uh, Vice Chair Robinson's full statement for the record. Make sure that, because I, I didn't, I'm like Commissioner Guider. I, I could not understand, hear what he was saying. So if everybody would mute their mics to include yours, so he can kind of make that statement oh. well known and for the public. So thank you. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Um, this, um, dealing with uh, administrative solutions. And this was a topic that came up in, during the work session. Um, and it only got to my attention when I, I, when I probed the question is, well, what does this person do? And we realized that they were leads down out into the community, which I'm fine with, I get. Uh, and then we realized that the duration of this contract was going on its 16th year. And that made me pause. Um, this, the second part of it is that, as we also realized, this person was also involved in uh, perhaps uh, insurance arrangement or certain conditions of financing to the side. So it was like an expanded scope. It's like, ooh, that's an interesting deal. And I, I just, I, I, I just, and, and nobody's here to address my concern. Um, I could have took it out of consent agenda, but I didn't. I just made it a condition for my support of the moment, saying this will be the last time I will support this without having um, it re be rebid. Uh, while I, I get people have the right and opportunity to present, we, we, we likewise have a right to uh, weigh in. Um, I just think to Madam Carthen's point, it's way too long. That's longer than our, 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 our financial advisors, our auditors, it's just way too long. Hire them. If you want them that long, just hire them. But to give them contracts like that, just to sort of, um, I, I just think that's too long. I think it's, it's, it's a time to break some of this up. I'll be more direct. And um, that, that's just, but I gave it the moment. And it's just one of those, like, it, it's duly noted. I was sensitive to my other peers, in fact, that they wanted to weigh in. So I'm not making a hard issue about it. But it's just, again, we don't catch everything that comes by. We only catch those things. We don't catch everything that comes by. But we do catch those things when every now and then we'll catch it. We'll sample something. Uh, pick that agenda item up and it's so it, it's not everything it's not blanket but just on this one 16 years is a long time for somebody to have a contract like this and a lot of times contracts just go beneath the you know beneath the waterline they just keep moving they just keep moving and our job as oversight again we're oversight and it's just to keep the process and the system honest and and again just making a point um, to Commissioner Mitchell, uh, if I, hopefully you heard me on this time, was um, I'm not calling for um, to take it out of consent agenda or even make it a sub vote since we're already in motion. It's just to, to put a note that um, if we see this next time, uh, it, it won't be without having um, it be rebid. 
I yield the floor, Madam Chair. That's all. Thank you, Commissioner Robinson. I yield the floor as well. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, and also thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Can everyone hear me? Okay, with that being said, we uh, duly noted, uh, Commissioner Robinson, and also Clerk, did you make a note of that? Uh, because that's very important, as we do uh, want to follow the process of rebidding out these contracts. We certainly, for our uh, auditing company, or should I say auditing uh, contract, we um, made sure for the finance department that we uh, bidded that contract out because they had been in place in almost 10 years when I came into office and we definitely changed that contract out and we want to continue to look through all our contracts to make sure that we are uh, definitely doing the right thing when it comes to rebidding these contracts. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Please indicate your response by uh, stating your your name, your district, uh, well, your district, your name, and also uh, your response. Starting with District 1. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell, yes. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Terenia Carthen, District 3, yes. And Jones Guider, District 4, yes. All right. And uh, Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous uh, vote, and the consent agenda uh, is approved and passed. Thank you. And the motion carries. We're going to move on to approval of expenses. Board of Commissioners, we have approval of expenses. I know you've had an opportunity to look those expenses over. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate with starting with District 1, your response. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell, yes. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Terania Carthen, District 3, yes. Ann Jones Guider, District 4, yes. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote, Board of Commissioners, and the motion carries. Uh, we have our annou announcements next, but before I bring on our Director of Communications, Mr. Rick Martin. Board of Commissioners, do you have any uh, specific announcements or uh, any announcements particular to your districts that you yes. would like to? Mm -hmm. Okay, I Ms. do. Martin. Thank you, Chairman Jones. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to let everyone know that on August the 8th, uh, District Commissioner Mitchell, District 1, Commissioner Robinson, District 2, and myself, Commissioner Carson, Carthen of District 3, will be holding a back to school giveaway. We will be giving away free school supplies. Um, PPE supplies. We will also be doing COVID-19 testing. And I just got word that we have a really cool sponsor, King of Pops will be there. So uh, we want to invite the entire community out on August 8th at 10 a.m. That's from 10 a.m. to 12 noon at the courthouse. So a local spot, everyone knows where the Douglas County Courthouse is. Again, that's August 8th from 10 a.m. until noon, school supplies, they are free. Come on out if you want to get tested. Um, COVID-19 testing, again, um, you can do that, um, put on by the Cobb Douglas Public Health. Uh, there'll be drive-through testing and drive-through school supplies. So I hope everyone will come out to the courthouse. Again, that's August 8th, which is a Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Any other commissioners with an up, uh, announcement to the citizens? Of Douglas County. Okay, you yeah. have the floor. No. Okay, no. Commissioner Mitchell, I heard yes. you. Yes, uh, just, just one announcement. And again, uh, to District 1, I mean, excuse me, 2 and 3, thanks again. And this is going to be a huge, uh, hopefully, testing and school supplies and all those good things. And so I can't. Just one quick thing. Um, this is going to be a little bit off topic, but for some strange reason, I thought I had the conversation with Mark earlier. And uh, I thought, uh, Brandon, are, are, you, are you on the line with me? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you would please, uh, your comments, please, that we missed out on earlier, that I would like for you to kind of share on what's going on and what that what that looks like, so I can make sure I get that part of it across to the general public. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, to the commissioners who are present, thank you guys for this time. I truly appreciate it, and I will um, look to be brief. 
I do have some written statements that I'll share now. Uh, today, I would like to first thank all of the commissioners for your continued work um, in creating a safe and unified and fiscally responsible community. And with that being said, I would also like to remind each of you that we as a community are definitely looking to you to continue to lead well and rise to the occasion when it's time to stand for righteous progression. So today, as I speak to you, I speak in unity and I speak to you as the elected officials that we chose for our community. And I ask you to do as the late John Lewis said and cause some good trouble. So in keeping with the topic that was discussed yesterday at the work session, I have requested, um, I am requesting today that the conversation of the Confederate monuments be the beginning of a movement for Douglas County to re reconcile its past and move toward a brighter future. Um, as Commissioner Robinson mentioned yesterday at the closing of his remarks, uh, it's time for us to evaluate the spirit of this community. And after listening to the draft resolution that was read at the work session yesterday, um, I just want to just add a few suggestions of some items that I think and the community thinks should be um, placed or considered when the resolution is written in regards to the Confederate statue. First, we ask that um, you guys pledge as an administration to continue to do research to find and celebrate the true history of Douglas County. Second, we ask that you as a commission would create a committee to host community dialogue about race relations and also create a committee to erect statues in Douglas County to commemorate true heroes of the county, state, and nation. And finally, we're asking that you continue to have conversations about removing other symbols within our county that have racist undertones, such as um, the name of Bill Arp Elementary School. Uh, as I close, I'll leave you guys with this very quickly. After hearing the overwhelming response that we received from multiple sectors of our community yesterday, I'm convinced that this issue is bigger than black and white, it's bigger than politics, it's bigger than budgets, and it's definitely bigger than a statue. This virus of racism in our community is a concern that must be addressed just the same or if, or even with more intention than any virus that we'll ever face like COVID-19. Um, and with those statements, I will yield the floor. Thank you, Brandon Penniman, and I appreciate that. Uh, I, I know you missed the whole reading of Madam Chair's uh, potential or what we're looking forward to possibly adjusting and putting together the uh, resolution. Uh, yes. but I don't, Madam Chair, if you if you would, because I think some of the uh, our audience missed that part of it. I don't know if you have the time or have the resolution that you mentioned to the general public yesterday late that they didn't get a chance to kind of hear that. I don't know if you want to read and state that again, if you would, but if you don't have the time, I understand. But I just think the general public, just for the record, needs to understand where we stand as a board and where we're going and bringing this county back together and uniting this county as one. Certainly, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, but I would uh, like my uh, director of communications to finish our, our um, at least our announcement that allowed me to give me a little time to, to put my hand on this resolution in my pile of papers, if that's so duly noted. So uh, I want to start with Rick first, allow him to finish the announcements, and then I can find the document. Okay, I'll roll up just to make that adjustment. Thank you very much. Rick, please proceed. Yes, good evening, Madam yes. Chair, Board mm -hmm. of Commissioners. Again, uh, just uh, last two announcements to mention. Uh, the Douglas County Libraries are offering temporary drive-up services Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Patrons may request books, movies, and document printing. Now, to print materials, you must call the library, and they will provide you with an email address and printing costs. Residents may not request more than 10 items at a time. Staff guarantee items will be available one hour later upon request. The drive-up service is intended to provide as many library services as possible during this pandemic. You're invited to contact Lindy Moore, the Director of Library Services at 770-920-7125. That's 770-920-7125. Or you can email her at lmoore, L-M-O-O-R-E, at wgrls.org. That's L Moore, M O O R E, at 
wgrls.org. As we continue with our virtual meetings, we are now inviting the citizens, as you know, tonight and yesterday to engage in public comment. Citizens may re register to speak by emailing Lisa Watson at lwatson at co.douglas.ga.us or via voicemail at 770-920-7416. Please include your name, email address, phone number, and topic in your request. The deadline to register is by noon on Friday, July 30th for the next work session of August 3rd or the commission meeting of August 4th. As a reminder, the public is invited to comment on any topic at the work session. However, comments for the commission meetings on Tuesdays shall be germane to the agenda. I yield back to you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you so much, uh, Communications Director. We appreciate your announcements. Uh, certainly, I want to first of all remind our citizens that we have 20,000 masks that are available uh, in terms of this COVID, uh, COVID uh, pandemic. And certainly, I, uh, we are encouraging you, myself and the Board of Commissioners, to please address your health uh, during this crisis. I know we have several pandemics on, uh, on um, the horizon right now. But certainly, uh, if we do not do the right things with our mask, or none of us will be here to talk about anything else. Certainly, um, I, again, I said we have we cannot take this pandemic lightly because if we do, this pandemic will take us. I wanted to also just share some information before I go into the resolution. And certainly, when I read the resolution today, I would like for our um, certainly our citizens to please refer back to your district commissioners if you have any questions. Again, this is a rough reading, but I will come back to that. I just have some other things that I need to run before the, the citizens here in Douglas County. Just wanted to give you an update today about COVID-19. In the state of Georgia right now, we have 148,988 COVID positive tests. We have 3,254 deaths, and we have um, 15,494 hospitalizations, and 2,904 of those hospitalizations uh, our citizens uh, within the state of Georgia and in, in the intensive care unit or have been. Douglas County at this pres uh, present time have 1,805 confirmed uh, COVID tests and we have 41 of our own citizens who have uh, passed on or have died as a result of this uh, unprecedented virus. And my deepest condolences and respect go out to the families and also I know speaking on behalf of the Board of Commissioners they feel the same as I do. I do ask our citizens to continue with the three W's. Please wash your hands consistently. Please, we highly recommend that you wear a mask. And then third, if you could just watch your social distancing. If you put all those ingredients together, uh, we are at, that will at least minimize uh, the, your opportunity for developing COVID-19 and certainly maximize your ability to be safe. Um, and I'm just trying to make sure I've covered everything related to COVID-19. Board, uh, also citizens, just want you to know that, uh, that we are working uh, very hard uh, to make sure that we do all the things that are necessary to address your health. We have our communications department that is actually providing information uh, on an uh, hour by our basis, please feel free to go to CelebrateDouglas.com and keep up with the latest changes or updates related to COVID-19. Also, myself and the Board of Commissioners have kicked off a robust educational campaign, and this campaign is moving full steam ahead. You will begin to see bill billboards. You're receiving mailers uh, in your, to your homes. You will be receiving one this week. Also, just reminding you about the three Ws. We have uh, not only that, but you will uh, start receiving robocalls and you will receive some, uh, we call them P2P texts coming through. And then we have variable message boards coming off the interstate uh, on our uh, Connect Douglas buses. We have across the variable board uh, strips, the top of the buses, just reminding everyone to wear their mask. This is uh, a robust campaign and I'm asking every citizen every board of commissioner, every elected official, constitutional officer to join us in this campaign because we have to take care of one another. So with that being said, I will pivot and certainly respond to the questions or the uh, regarding or the comments earlier about the monument that's out front. Certainly, again, citizens, 
Uh, in these particular meetings, everything has to be adjourn, uh, germane to the agenda, but I will make an exception to allow the citizens of Douglas County to hear me read again the um, my resolution uh, regarding the monument. Let me say this, that the Board of Commissioner, Commissioners are committed to making sure that we do the right thing and that we abide by the Georgia state law, which is OCGA 50-3-1 and Senate Bill 77. And uh, we will do things decent and in order in Douglas County, as I made very clear yesterday, and I still stand on my word. Uh, I've made it very clear that we will, we are taking egregious actions to make sure that we follow all the letter of the law uh, in terms of removing monuments. Um, the, the public was uh, uh, certainly reminded on yesterday and uh, there will be some continuing dialogues within the districts. And also I will bring, be bringing the issue of monuments back to our meeting on uh, April, I'm sorry, August the 3rd and also the 4th with a potential resolution. Therefore, if the Board of Commissioners decide to move forward with my, with my pending resolution. But I want to make it clear to every citizen in Douglas County that efforts are being made uh, from the Board of Commissioners. Number one, we're starting with uh, the monuments that that's one issue at hand. I believe that there's been a laundry list of things that have been put before us. Again, I said bring one wall down at a time. I appreciate the commitment, the conviction, but I believe the circumstance and I'm going to make that very clear again. So again, citizens, I appreciate you as you work with us and have patience during this moment uh, of racism, because that's what the purpose of, of what the Board of Commissioners are doing. We are trying to address it within the most appropriate manner. Certainly, we are appealing to our Georgia legislatures and hoping that one day that we will be granted the opportunity for home rule authority to allow us to make decisions on such matters. So with that being said, I will read the first reading and it was read on yesterday at our uh, work session. And again, this is certainly a draft and the resolution states as follows, follows. Whereas on May 5th, 1914, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners granted permission to the Douglasville chapter of the United Daughters of the Confederacy to erect a monument of a Confederate soldier herein after the monument on the courthouse square of Douglas County and whereas the monument was subsequently moved to the new courthouse and whereas civil unrest ac across the nation over Confederate monuments and memorials has escalated and has been the focus of campaigns for removal and whereas the monument is listed among Confederate monuments and memorials in Georgia that were established as public displays and symbols of the Confederate States of America. And whereas part of the nationwide mandate for racial justice, there is a debate over the displaying of the Confederate monuments and memorials. And whereas diverse communities have argued that allowing the Confederate monuments and memorials to continue being displayed cause division because they are considered by some to be controversial symbols. And whereas OCGA 50-3-1 prohibits the relocation, removal, concealment, obscuring, and alteration in any fashion of publicly owned monuments of memorials dedicated to military service or past or present military personnel of the United States of America or the Confederate States of America. And whereas Georgia Senate Bill 77 signed into law on April 26, 2019, provided government monuments and commemorative symbols with even more protection. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners shall continue to work towards ending discrimination within the confines of the Georgia state law while advocating for home rule authority, allowing government, local governments to exercise decisions on such matters. And of course it would read as if approved, passed and adopted by the Board of Commissioners. And again, this is just, a, I would call this a second reading today citizens and it's still being massaged. And this, this resolution will be coming before the Board of Commissioners at our April 3rd uh, meeting. And then of course, uh, with the hopes of being approved 
on uh, the April uh, 4th, August 4th. I don't know why I'm thinking about April, August 4th meeting. Uh, and I will repeat, so uh, again, this resolution is in play. It is uh, certainly been formulated. Come, it is coming directly from my office and my desk. And certainly, it, it, I'm open it. Uh, it's open to the uh, Board of Commissioners, certainly, to take to their districts and uh, certainly add more language in here. And then we will go, uh, we will review uh, on August the 3rd and approve accordingly on August the 4th. With that being said, uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have any any other questions or concerns? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me just comment because I just, as, as I did before, trying to make sure that that resolution that you made. Know, can you guys hear me? Am I? You, you, I can, you, okay. You're okay. very faint. Can you? I uh, don't know what it may or may not be, though. My computer's having some more issues here, but hopefully you guys can hear me. So I just wanted to make sure that that reading get through to not only the Board of Commissioners, but also to those citizens who asked me the question recently. I didn't know that there were, not only was there a resolution, but there is something that's being proposed. I also talked and say to my colleagues, especially uh, Commissioner Carson, uh, who has designed and put together and looked at the other Board of Commissioners, uh, the other commissioners' uh, thoughts and ideas to add to this. So whatever that end result will end up being, I think it will be right to say at this point, it will, it, it will be on behalf of Madam Chair and the Board of Commissioners. So I just want to make sure that the general public understand that side of it, that the Board of Commissioners are also taking part in this entire process. And it's not uh, that it's a resolution from your desk, it's from the, your desk but it's with all of our uh, input as to what the end result will end up being. Last but not least, um, thank you for rereading that and restating that just for the public so they'll know. The other part of this here, I wanna make sure we are clear as a board that to Mark, Tiffany, and the rest of staff, when submitting, putting out, or endorsing, or speaking on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, it's it's got to be understood that when that statement is being made, it has been cleared by the Board of Commissioners. <clears throat> and let me express what I mean by that. And that is any leaflets, any information that goes out, because individually, as Vice Chair Robinson sometimes states, we are our own, we're, we're, we're sovereign. If anything comes from my desk, it'll say, Commissioner Mitchell, uh, on behalf of Commissioner Mitchell, this is the statement and this is the statement that's being made. I will never include the Board of Commissioners without first getting their written approval or their buy-in before making any statements of that caliber. So moving forward, I just wanna make it known for the record. So Mark, Tiffany, and the rest of staff before uh, sending out anything on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, it needs to be approved and signed off by each individual commissioner, not by one commissioner, or, or it needs to be a unanimous decision that is from the Board of Commissioners, not uh, it's from the Board of Commissioners, just in word only. So with that being said, outside of that, I hope we are clear on, on that statement for the record, because there are some things that have happened that I wasn't approved of and I don't want our brand, especially the Board of Commissioners brand, to be diluted or being treated in a dysfunctional fashion. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you again, and I yield the floor. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Again, my communications department, when you all have rolled out messages, those messages, of course, uh, they are coming from me. If you certainly want to go that route, because we will continue to get our message out about COVID-19, and that is very important. So if it if we have to go from each commissioner, we will certainly we will circumvent the process because I need to get these messages out uh, regarding COVID-19. Commissioner Mitchell, I appreciate your conversation. We can take this offline. Me and you can have a personal meeting. Again, you can explain to me those things that are concerning to you, but I'm going to take the high road and talk to the citizens and tell them 
We appreciate you, uh, Douglas County citizens. We love you. Please take care of yourself in this COVID situation because my main objective is to make sure that I take care of every citizen in Douglas County and I will continue to do that. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, I have nothing else to say tonight. The citizens, I do say this, that number one, we will take care of ourselves. We will not take this virus lightly because if we do, the virus will take us and we will keep our eye on the sparrow because number one, we all need to be healthy and safe during this pandemic. We will not take our eye off big issues such as racism. That's important. We will continue to address those issues in the most professional, most gracious manner. What we do in this county will be decent and it will be in order. And with that being said, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County, good night and I love you. Thank you.